Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dan, Warpaint JKU. This is Project Maple Leaf. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about weld on high steer arms. I'm gonna show you guys the process and how we get it to this point as well as finish it out and why high steer arms are a benefit. We're also gonna talk about how to weld those high steer arms to cast steel. Anytime you're welding mild steel to cast steel, the process is a little different. There's a number of different ways that you can go about doing it. Some take a little bit longer. I'm gonna show you the way I've done it for years and never had a failure and always had great results. So check it out. All right guys, so for the high steer arms, they're basically gonna weld to your factory knuckles. All you need to do is grind them down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you certainly wanna get the surface rust off. We have to drill out the factory tie rod. Here are the tools that we're gonna need, okay? Obviously, I got some gloves here. I got hearing protection, built-in eye protection. We're gonna be using a half-inch chuck corded electric drill it will eat batteries if you use a battery operated i found that these are really cheap and they're super strong and then i bought this drill bit set i've used it before it used to come in a wooden box now it doesn't i guess they tried to, to cut some costs out but basically this is the kit i will link to it in the description and it's a very affordable kit that starts at 9 16 and goes all the way up to one inch now they're not the highest quality drill bits. I'm probably only gonna be able to use them to drill out both sides of these knuckles and then they're trash. But if you go to buy a high quality one inch drill bit, it's gonna cost you more than that entire kit does. And the one inch isn't enough. You're gonna need to step it up to that one inch in order to do it correctly. So um, guys, that's, that's definitely an affordable kit if you're not doing something like this you know, weekly. Um, but anyway. Let's get back to it. Let's start drilling. When it comes to drilling this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are actually drilling from the bottom toward the top. So I flipped this knuckle over. The reason you do that is because this hole is tapered uh, from the factory for like a factory tie rod end or similar to like a ball joint. Um, and it goes in from the bottom toward the top. The top is where the nut would go. So it's got that cone shape. We're gonna be getting rid of that as we expand this out to a complete one inch hole. But I'm also gonna take a Sharpie and make sure I draw a straight line in a couple of different places in alignment with the hole. So as I'm drilling, I can ensure that my drill bit is staying straight in here. All right guys, so at this point, I have drilled out the factory tie rod mount, and this is how I did it. I started off with a 11 16 drill bit. That's this guy here. I went to a three quarter, a 13 16 7 8 15 16 finally one inch. Now, it took a lot of time, it took a lot of heat. I even burned out that drill and had to replace it with that drill, which is now cooling because it was smoking by the end of it. And I took time in between, guys. This, this is definitely a heavy duty deal, which is why these drill bits are nice. Now, it may have taken a little less time if I had a more high quality drill bit, but they're a lot more expensive when you have to use that many. So it got the job done. Um, now, because this hole is drilled out to that one inch diameter, this one inch bolt is gonna fit right on there. So. Let's check it out. Okay, as you can see, I have the high steer arm kind of put together. I haven't welded anything yet. I'm just test fitting it at this point. Basically, this collar here, this spacer, is gonna get welded to the top of your factory tie rod mount. It also gets welded to the bottom of the bottom plate on your high steer arm. This one inch bolt is gonna slide right through it, and it helps key and line everything up. Now. I can look at it from this angle and see that it is basically exactly perpendicular to the hub mounting surface, right? I mean, this is where your wheel is gonna bolt on. You got a lot of angles going on in here, but this is where your wheel is gonna bolt on and your tire obviously is gonna be perpendicular to that. You want this kind of aligned in that way and it is, okay? Um, I don't know how it looks on camera right now, but it is. The one thing that I don't like right now is the fitment 
in this area here. And that is simply because there is a spot on there from the casting when they made this knuckle that we're gonna have to grind down. You can see it right there. I'm gonna take that off. This will fit smoothly. And then I'm gonna start to show you guys how to weld mild steel to cast steel. Finally getting to it guys, stick around. We cleaned up this a little bit better in preparation for welding and I took that spot off that was right there. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have your welder all set up. Make sure your ground clamp is on. Get yourself a set of map gas. Propane also works, but map gas is hotter. It won't take as long to get your cast up to temperature. Now, because cast steel is the type of steel that it is, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you heat this steel up, just the cast to about 300 or so degrees, maybe even 350, and then start to weld to it. The reason you do that is because both of these metals are dissimilar and they're going to heat and cool at different rates. So we're gonna heat it with the torch. We're gonna to use an infrared thermometer to make sure that it's between three and 350. Once it is, we're gonna lay a bead. And we're done with that. I'll show you how to make sure it cools correctly because like I said a second ago, they heat and cool at different temperatures, which means the metal is contracting and expanding at different rates and that's how you'll crack a weld. Heating this up allows you to get better penetration into the cast and it allows you then to monitor the temperature as we bring it back down. Okay, so obviously I have my welding hood already on. You saw that a second ago. We're now gonna start to heat this with the torch, monitor the temperature. I already have my gloves on. I am ready to weld. As soon as this cast is at temperature, we're gonna burn it in. Okay, at this point, we're about 325, 340 degrees. So we're gonna pick up the welder. I'm gonna position this, make sure it's lined up correctly, and I'm gonna start to weld it in. Now at this point, we've laid a bead across the top. We're gonna check the cast steel get a temperature reading on that. We're gonna check the weld, get a temperature reading on that, and then we're gonna check the mild steel and get a temperature reading on that. As soon as they're about 50, 60 degrees different from each other, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get in there with your torch, reheat, reheat the cooler steel, and make sure it all gradually comes down together. Once it's down to about 175, 150 degrees or so, you can just let it cool down. All right, so at this point, we have the top, we have the top welded on there, we have the bottom welded on there, we've welded that spacer to the knuckle itself and to the bottom plate. This is finished. Now, we're gonna weld the tube to the center section on the 14 bolt. We're also gonna do that on the Dana 60. Now, again, this process is the same. Heat this up, weld to it, cool it correctly move around the axle, heat it up, cool it, do the same thing, and it takes a little bit of time. But I will say, guys, it is way faster than heating it up, welding it, wrapping it in a fiberglass blanket for 24 hours and coming back later. This way is much faster. All right guys, so you've now seen that we have the high steer arm welded, we have the axle tube welded, the 14 bolt is actually painted. Um, I'll talk about that in another video. But why did we choose the kit we did? Well, to put it simply, you saw in other clips that we chose the TMR Customs high steer arm. And plain and simple, it's affordable, okay? The TMR Customs has a number of benefits to it, but there's a number of companies that make them. And the one thing that definitely separates TMR Customs is their build quality and their price point. Um, 
They also sell these individually, so you can buy the driver's side or the passenger side. So if you happen to mess one up, or your particular design only happens to call for one, um, you can do that. You damage one out on the trail, you gotta replace a knuckle, but you don't wanna have to buy the whole steering kit to weld on to that new knuckle. You can do that with the TMR Customs kit. I like the flexibility, that's kinda nice. Uh Guys, there you have it. So share this video, make sure you click the like button, maybe even drop a comment. Stay tuned, we got a lot more videos coming. And definitely stay tuned for the suspension on Maple Leaf because that's gonna is what's gonna make this rig one of a kind. So check it out.